kidney function is, uh, is, is super critical. It does a lot of different things. Let's talk about some of the basic functions of the kidney before we, you know, before we dive into some, some nutritional tips related to how you can preserve and, uh, and help your kidneys to detoxify at their fullest capacity. So let's talk about kidney functions. I'm going to go ahead and throw a slide up on the screen for you here. And uh, so we're going to talk about some of the basic kidney functions. So number one, kidneys filter your bloodstream. So, you know, your blood, as it's constantly pumping, it's pumping through your kidneys. Your kidneys are these massive filters that, that do a lot of filtration of your blood. And then, you know, the excess of that, the excess that comes out, many chemicals, many different types of agents that if they stayed in your body would potentially be harm, harmful or damaging, right? So detoxification through that filtration system. So kidneys filter predominantly what they're filtering is they're filtering your blood. They're filtering the different elements in your blood. Remember that we talk about for most people, true detoxification, you have the liver and the liver, what the liver does is it turns different chemicals into water soluble compounds and those water soluble compounds are part of the blood. And so as your liver converts them into water, they can then be filtered through the kidneys, right? And that's, you know, again, it's kind of a one-two punch. Your liver has to, to filter some of these chemicals or at least, at least uh, convert some of these chemicals first and then it's up to your kidneys to filter the blood. So we want really strong functioning kidneys. One of the other functions of the kidneys is the acid-base balance. So your kidneys are very critical for maintaining the adequate pH of your bloodstream, uh, of your bloodstream in your in your urine as well. So the acid base balance of the body very important. Also, electrolyte function. Your kidney regulates water balance. So water balance of the body. Any of you ever had swollen feet? Um, this is one of the you know one of the hallmark symptoms or can be of kidney dysfunction. That's a lot of times because the kidney is not properly holding or it's, or it's letting go of too little water. And so we have a holding on of water through abnormal electrolyte uh, balancing. And so then that water can kind of pull into what's called the interstitial fluid in your feet and it can lead to swelling, not just the feet, also the hands and, uh, and the skin itself. So puffiness or swelling, common side effect of kidney dysfunction, but that's through the function of the electrolyte balance. Now ki the uh, kidney also produces a hormone called renin Renin regulates blood pressure. So this is why sometimes doctors will give you medications uh, to control blood pressure. It's actually through, uh, there's, a, there's a type of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of hormone downstream from renin called angiotensin. And so sometimes doctors will give you blood pressure medications to affect that. And so again, renin is produced by your kidneys, which helps to maintain and regulate your blood pressure. There's also a compound called erythropoietin that your kidney makes. It's a hormone that uh, drives or increases the production of red blood cells from the bone marrow. So kidney plays a role in that as a function. Kidney also plays a role in activating vitamin D. So vitamin D has to be activated by your liver and your kidneys. And if you don't activate that vitamin D, then what can happen is your vitamin D, one of its main functions is it tells your intestinal lining to absorb calcium from the food that you eat. So when your vitamin D levels are really low, what can end up happening is your bone density starts to drop or you can develop problems. That's why vitamin D diseases like vitamin D deficiency in children can cause uh, softening of the bones, a disease known as rickets. In, ad in, the, in adults, it's also called osteomalacia. Same disease, just different names with, with adults and kids. But that, again, without good kidney function, you lose your ability to activate vitamin D, which is one of the reasons why we see elderly with kidney dysfunction have a really, really hard time getting their vitamin D levels up uh, to where they need to be. And uh, oftentimes, even with supplementation, they still continue to struggle because a lot of doctors don't actually use enough vitamin D to make this happen in the case of somebody who has kidney dysfunction. So, so, so these are some of your big, big functions of the kidney, which again, detoxification by filtering the blood, acid base regulation, so regulating the pH of your bloodstream. Remember, pH balance is very, very critical for normal function. Electrolyte and water balance, the regulation of blood pressure, the regulation of how many red blood cells you produce. Remember what are red blood cells do? 
So they carry oxygen, they carry O2, and without oxygen, you become anemic, right? You become lethargic, brain foggy, slow, muscle pains, muscle aches. So we gotta have good functioning kidneys. And, uh, and, and lastly, activating vitamin D. So kind of in a nutshell, that's your kidney functions. Important to know those things as we talk about um, what you can do to, again, to better nutritionally support your kidney. Now, I wanna talk some as well. Let's throw up, uh, let's throw up slide number, let's see here. Let's throw up slide number, yeah, let's throw up slide number, that one right there. Yeah, gluten causes kidney damage. So let's talk about, uh, actually, no, I want to skip this. Let's, sorry, sorry, Mel. Uh, let's go to the next one. Let's go to lab test because we want to really throw in some lab testing for you because you know, these are the functions of the kidney. So how do you get your kidney evaluated? If you want to go to your doctor and get your kidney evaluated, what are the tests that you can run to determine whether or not your kidney is functioning properly? So i got a slide for you on this as well. But one of the main tests is called creatinine, not creatine, like the nutritional supplement for, for you know, people who try to build muscle, Creat, creatinine. Okay, so this is a blood marker. This is in your blood, and it's measuring how well your kidneys are filtering this breakdown product of your muscles. So, and so your kidneys are supposed to filter that out, right? And so creatinine is one measure, one marker in the blood. There's another one called blood urea nitrogen, or BUN for short, also a blood test that helps un, uh, doctors understand whether or not your kidneys are, are functioning adequately or starting to fail. There's another marker called GFR. Now, GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate. This is a, a marker for the glomeruli, which are the functional units of your kidney's filtration ability. And so this can be calculated from your creatinine, um, but, it also, but if you wanna run it and, and get an accurate assessment, to get a true G, GFR, you can do what's, what's called a urine creatinine, so the same test up here, urine creatinine over 24 hours. Um, but GFR is oftentimes calculated based on your blood creatinine. So um, you can also do what's called a calculated GFR, which is basically, it's just a, again, it's an estimation. Instead of having to pee for 24 hours in a bucket, um, doctors can run your blood and measure creatinine and through a formulaic process, they can calculate your estimated GFR. So these are predominantly, these are lab tests that many doctors will run. There's also another urine test called albumin, which is an indicator. Um, albumin is protein, and so this is in the urine. And if this is spilling into your urine, it's a marker that, that your kidneys are damaged because albumin is supposed to be, um, some small amounts of albumin will come out in your urine, but predominantly it will stay in your bloodstream. So your kidney won't filter the albumin into the urine. It, it will keep it in the bloodstream. So it filters your blood, leaves the albumin in it, unless it's damaged, in which case we see albumin and, and another protein called prealbumin leaking into the urine. Again, markers, all of these are markers potential for kidney dysfunction. So what happens to most people is they go to their doctor and these three right here are super standard right? Uh, the creatinine in the blood, the blood urea nitrogen, and the GFR. Those are really standard tests that get run. The actual albumin in the urine, unless you see a nephrologist, this is probably not a test that your average doctor is going to run. Creatinine over 24 hours is also not a test your average doctor is going to run. Usually those are kidney specialists, kidney docs that are going to run those two. But these top three are some of the primary ones. So again, if your creatinine is too high, it can be a problem. If your blood urea nitrogen um, is too high, it could be a problem. And if your GFR is too low, it could be a problem. So those are, again, kidney function tests that uh, you can ask your doctor to order on you if you feel like you're struggling with a problem. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.